Hey, good day, it's Dan here. It's another glorious October day, so I'm outside getting a little sun. And I spent most of the weekend outside, actually. Uh, Saturday, we were uh, got together with my wife's family. We all met at um, my sister-in-law's property. She's got a bunch of firewood there that needed cutting up, so we all met there and had a big work bee and got a bunch of firewood ready for the winter. We brought a truckload home and and my in-laws brought a truckload home and uh, and uh, all around a great day. It was gorgeous and great to be outside with everybody. And while we were driving, actually, uh, this property is out in the country and we drove by a number of horses and it reminded me of a story I want to tell you today or, or maybe a little analogy, not so much a story. And the analogy goes that you can pretty much, you can ride a horse in the direction it's going and if you know how to ride a horse and you know how to direct it where you want it to go, it'll go where you want it to go in most cases. You want to take it one direction, you pull on the reins. If you want it to speed up, you give it a little kick with your heels. You want it to slow down, you pull back on the reins. That's all well and good until the horse decides it wants to go somewhere else. So my wife likes to go on trail rides. She's been reminding me of that lately. So I'm going to have to put that on the list. And... Uh, what happens though if the horse wants to go somewhere else and you want to go down the trail and the horse spots the pond the other direction and it's thirsty? Are you going where you want to go or are you going where the horse wants to go? Well in most cases you're going to go where the horse wants to go because you're not bigger and stronger than the horse. It's going to decide where you go. And the purpose of this story is that your mind is a lot like that horse and rider. Your conscious mind, the, the thoughts you think of on a regular basis, are like the rider on the horse. You say you want to do things, and the horse is the one that actually decides whether you do them or not. And the horse, in this case, represents your subconscious or your unconscious mind. It's your programming, it's, it's the systems that you've got in place that you've been operating on since you were a, a child. And the reality is, is until you get your subconscious in alignment with your conscious mind, then what you say you want to do and what you actually do in often, uh, in a lot of cases, will be two different things. So you say you want to get wealthy, but your subconscious has a programming that says, you know what, that that rich kid that I went to school with, and this is actually a program I um, I recognized that I had running on my own, is that the wealthy kid in my class was a jerk that nobody liked. And so I formed a belief that wealthy people were jerks. And so if that programming is run, running in the background, in my mind, it's not possible for me to become wealthy. So I had to shift that programming. And so one of the ways that you shift that programming is that you need to change the inputs. So a good example is get around to other wealthy people that are maybe better examples of the kind of people you, you want to aspire to. So it's wealthy people that are generous, that are giving, that are great people that are fun and enthusiastic and full of life and uh, kind to people and not arrogant. Those are the kinds of people you want to be around. And so by putting those kind of inputs in, you, you diminish the input from that past experience. Another great way, and this is what I want to encourage you to do, is to go on a 30-day uh, mental fast. And the way you do this is for the next 30 days, I want you to, one, listen to an inspiring or an educational or motivational audio. One audio every day for 30 days. And ideally, you're going to do this first thing in the morning when you first get up and last thing at night before you go to bed because that's when your mind is most susceptible to ideas. Because when you're sleeping, your mind doesn't shut off. It's still working all night long, so why not give it good material to work on while you're sleeping? Number two, no negativity for 30 days. Turn off the news, turn off the radio, get rid of the newspapers, don't look at them. No negativity whatsoever. Just 
find a way to remove yourself from it altogether. And in fact, I'd encourage you to do that forever, but for 30 days for sure, as part of your mental fast, do this. And number three is read daily. And now I'm not going to tell you that there's one specific book you've got to read. There's all kinds of books out there. Read something that'll make you a better person. Now, whether that's something that uh, helps you in your business life, in your personal life, uh, financially, health, whatever it happens to be, read something good. Don't read a, a trashy novel. Uh, don't read something that's just full of uh, death and destruction or war and all those kinds of pieces. Make it something that's going to uplift you and help you become a better person. So that's my encouragement. Do a 30-day mental fast so that your horse is headed in the same direction as you want to go. And the way to do that is to change what's going into your mind because what goes into your mind gets into your heart. What's in your heart becomes your words, whether they're to others or even just to yourself. Your words are going to dictate your actions. So it's, it's the words that you're saying to yourself. It's the words that you're saying to other people. Those dictate your actions and your actions determine your destiny and it all starts with what you're putting into your mind. So make sure it's good stuff. That's all I got for you today. I hope you're having a great day and I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye for now.